Hey friends, followers, welcome to McFarland's Corner. I'm Mike McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide. Going to give you a little Lake Fork rundown here uh, for the first week of November. Um, haven't talked to you in a little while, um, so things have changed in probably, I think, eight, nine, ten days since I'm really giving you a good report. Um, I need a little time off from this, too. Um, fishing is my job. I'm very lucky to get to do it, but every now and then a break is really nice. So, But here we go. Let's get you caught up. Uh, usually I go hunting, and I, man, I was going to fit it in, and that two-day windstorm was awful. Destroyed my property. I spent literally Monday, Tuesday getting all ready. Mowed on my lawn, weed whack, weed sprayed. I mean, I was ready to go, and then two days of just brutal wind destroyed it. Had to do it all over again. Needless to say, in the last two weeks, those high winds mixing the lake um, have really changed things, and it's it got real tough. Um, my last trip, last two trips, really, um, we had a zero on a, on Friday, ten days ago, approximately. Um, we had a zero. It was really tough. Um, I had a, a mother and son, which, you know, usually father and son are my favorite trips. I had a mother and son. Um, I really worked hard. Man, I was I had the fingers crossed that something awesome was going to happen. I would have really loved to make a post of mother and son. And let me tell you, um, the mother could fish. Um, she actually stepped up with a Zebco. Um, that's what she wanted to use. Um, I was a bit perplexed in the beginning, but she could fire that thing anywhere I could throw a bait caster. Very impressive. I'm very disappointed, you know, that we didn't hook up. It happens. Saturday, I turned back around and grind all day. At lunch, we got no fish. We're on our way to that zero again. And I offered the clients, you know, a chance to cut back to half a day. They said no fishing, fishing, and we'll grind it out. And, and I'm glad we did. The afternoon, we produced about maybe seven, eight fish and missed another four or five. Um, no, nothing big. But the change is that the lake is, is falling. Temperatures are changing dramatically. Um, lake level 400.60 yesterday, today 40.56, which is in essence two and a half feet low. Um, when I tell you this, I'm always going to have an arrow over here so you know where the lake has been falling or rising. I expect some rain tomorrow. That's going to change things a little bit. Um, I'm fishing the end of the week, so I'm going to give you a little more reports later on in this week. But I want you to pay attention to this. When the lake is two and a half feet low, one of my most important tips on this lake is don't cut corners anymore. When you're running those buoys and you're transitioning from one buoy lane to another buoy lane, don't cut those corners. Um, because there can be, and in some places, there are stumps in those corners. When the lake is two and a half feet low, you can and will hit them. Especially guide lanes. If you bought the boat lanes chips and you are on a guide lane, which means there's no buoys, man, start tightening up your turns and be on those corners. Don't transition from one guide lane to another in, in a sweeping, floating mashin, or, uh, manner, or you're going to regret it. All right? The water clarity, man, it just depends on where you are at. The winds dirtied some backwaters up in some places, um, kind of already settled a little bit. One to three foot, it just depends. Down south in the deeper basin, finding some clear water. Turnovers way behind us. That's why I put stable. Um, <clears throat> things are really going to happen fast, all right? And what I mean by that is here. This is what matters the most, all right? Until this gets below 54 degrees. And right now, we're at 64 to 70 degree range. Um, depending on backwaters, main lake. When this gets below 54, man, the lake's pretty much starting to, to slow down, shut down. The bass are shutting down. But from now until then, they fall feast. And so you've got to find them. All right. With that being said, let's talk about some of the baits and what I am doing. Um, fishing's getting better. And again, at the end of this week, I'll give you a Friday report. I'm fishing Friday and Saturday. Um, but you got to search them out. It's still fall, major fall transition right now. The end of fall, that water's dropping fast. Find the balls of bait. Remember that the balls of bait, if they're round, the ball of bait itself is round. Nothing's been hitting it or pushing it or driving on it. If it's broken up and elongated, then it's been pushed. Um, and, and you probably want to fish in that area. So cover a lot of water. I'm going to give you the two baits that I've been using. And, and a strategy to fish right now, if you're coming out to fish this, this week at Fork, the rain's going to change things tomorrow. So I'm really going to give you a couple of these baits. And then my top four 
um, and then we're going to do another video after this rundown. I'm going to be calling it Dirty Water Techniques, okay, with UV baits. Um, be sure and watch that, all right, because I got some really cool tips and tricks in there that when we flood, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, we're going to flood, the water's going to really turn colors, it's going to get dirty, and dirty and cold, and you want to know about that. But hey, man, this shouldn't be a surprise to you. My four top baits right now to fish for are going to be your underspin, okay? Have a gold blade if you can for cloudy days, just a simple silver or chrome on the others. I'm still throwing small baits. This is a three inch reaction innovation, uh, little beaver. I mean, I'm sorry, little dipper. Um, you could throw the full size dipper if you're around bigger bait, but remember, always match the hatch. So if you're around small bait, match the hatch. I'm tending to find fish around small baits. So I'm staying with that. That's one of my number one search baits. Okay, the second bait is such a great fall bait. Um, there's nothing better, by the way, than these sleeves. I just love these rock sock sleeves. Those sleeves right there are three years old, and there's not a blemish in them. There's not a hole in them. There's never been a hook that's got stuck, even with the crankbaits and the open treble hooks hanging. Um, they just, they do what they say they do. They protect your rod, hook free. Awesome system to know the sizes. Thanks, Rod Socks. Appreciate you very much. All right, so here's probably one of my most favorite, favorite Lake Fork colors in any crankbait you're going to throw. This is a chartreuse blueback. Uh, but when that water's going to get dirty, this is also going to come into play and be very important. We've been following the chartreuse blue back and or like the parrot color, or you even hear about in, in the wintertime fire tiger. This is, color has been around for years. This color and this bait is made by Strike King. Okay, this is just a little Strike King square bill, 2.5. They don't put any UV finish to it. There's nothing that they've ever advertised or said that they've intentionally done with UV. Yet, look at the UV reaction. Chartreuse is a natural UV reflective. Um, this is unreal. This just blows my mind. At No wonder this color, this combination is deadly in dirty water. It's deadly in deeper water. The 10XD works so well in the deep water in this chartreuse blueback just because of that reason alone. Dirty water, dark water, low light conditions, UV penetration is huge, okay? This is my favorite fall bait. It's my favorite really spring bait. Um, just to, in the spring, I'm gonna be around much bigger bait. I hope I'm gonna find the, uh, the 4.0 or even the 8.0 um, is gonna give me those much bigger spring females, pre-stage females. But in the fall, the 2.5 Strike King, and even smaller, all right? But remember, underspin, square bill to find you some bites. Getting in that area, um, the Texas rig, the Carolina rig, and of course the jigs are very important. A couple quick tips on your Carolina rigs. Get away from the shad now. It's November's a crawfish month. Um, so go to creature baits. On your Texas rig worms, get them off. You know, when we were throwing the Berkeley worm all this time, get away from the worm. Um, and go to the creature baits and you'll find a lot more success. Um, go to the chigger craw or the brush hog, the smaller ones. The smaller baits are very important. Um, but November is a crawfish month. It's a big crawfish month. Um, and I think that's important uh, to know and realize. The crawfish are feeling this temperature. They're moving, getting ready to go in the holes and molt. Um, this is a big time fall transition. So that's how I'm fishing for it. But I want to add my two favorites now. I told you I was going to give you my top four favorites. The Carolina rig, the jig, and the worm the Texas rig creature baits are just how I'm fishing. 10 to 15 feet on the main lake points um, and secondary channel swings. Okay, uh, but one of my top favorites that I always have in the fall, no matter what, is going to be a top water with some kind of feather. All right, um, I think I talked about this a couple weeks back. The the uh, Lucky Craft. Um, Oh, I can't remember which one it was. It's one that sinks and sits straight up. Um, for some reason, it's not in my mind. But anyways, between any kind of walking bait that I'm going to have, I'm going to want to feather in the fall. All right, I'm going to want to slow it down. I'm going to make sure absolutely that I found some fish or hard fish surfacing before I throw that. Um, but my most favorite in the fall, as a child even, was a spinner bait. Um, it's just the hardest. It's a hard 
It's one of the most check caching baits in the old days. Um, it's a big fish catcher, um, and, and it's just it's hard to put down. In, in the fall time, the spinner bait is one of the number one big fish baits, um, with the exception of something that came out about 2006, and I just merely call it a spinner bait on steroids. Um, and that's the good old Alabama rig. Okay. So my top four baits right now, reaction bait, underspin, square bill, top water. And anywhere that I would throw a spinner bait, I'm going to throw a weedless, lightweighted version in an Alabama rig instead of a spinner bait. And man, this bait right here on fork right now, covered in enough water. You're throwing it shallow. You can generally get it back when you get stuck on the stumps. It's weedless, so it, you know don't fish it 10, 15 feet of water. But but search out those baits and anywhere I'm throwing that under spinner, anywhere you see a stump and you want to throw a spinner bait by it, try throwing one of these by it. One of my favorites. I I call it a spinner bait on steroids. All right. So those are my top four. Again, the Carolina rig, the worm, and the jig are going to always be part of my arsenal. This time of year, I'm really getting away from anything worm-like and back to the creature baits. All right? And I've got some UV baits and some things that I want to talk to you about. I'm going to make it a special little show, so this one's not too long. I'm going to come in and, and refilm this version. We will flood here in the next few days, two weeks, month. That backwaters will turn colors, and the fish won't necessarily leave those backwaters, especially if they're not too cold. Also, those backwaters are going to play what we call the Texas two-step all winter, which they warm up on warm trends, and they cool down on cool trends. A couple days from the south, a couple days from the north, we'll be talking about that. So the water's going to get dirty, and you don't want to miss this version of how I fish the dirty water and why I choose to use the UV Tight lines UV baits. Okay. Appreciate you watching. Um, that kind of covers it. Remember, right now fishing is tough on fork. If you're coming out this weekend, watch for my Friday report. I hopefully have a little bit more of a, a defined bite for you. Um, hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for following all of you that have. I wish you all great fishing. God bless and thanks for watching.